In the previous video, we took a look at the application we're going to be building in the series, and we set up a new Vue 3 project. In this video, we're going to install and configure Tailwind CSS. Within the terminal for VS Code, ensuring that we're in our Vue project folder, we want to run the command npm install, and then we're going to pass a D flag to install this as a dev dependency, and we're going to install the following packages, Tailwind CSS, Post CSS, and Auto Prefixer. Once that is completed, we then need to create our Tailwind configuration file. We can do this by running the command mpx tailwinds init and then pass the p flag. Then inside of our Tailwind configuration file that we just created, we need to configure what is called the template path so that way Tailwind knows where to look for the classes that we're applying within our project. Now where we configure this is within this content property right here which initially when we generated this configuration file is empty. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this entirely and copy and paste in the correct one. Now simply what this is doing is it's going to look for classes inside of our index.html file which is in the root of our project here and then any file in this path right here that has the following extensions. Next, we need to create a new CSS file to act as the entry point for all of Tailwind's layers. So where we're going to do this is within the assets folder and we're going to create a new file called tailwind.css. Within this file, using the Tailwind directive, we're going to install the three main layers of base, component, and utilities. The last thing we need to do is head into a file called main.js and import this newly created tailwind.css file into this file here. So all we're going to do is say import and then we want to navigate to our assets folder and then we have our tailwind.css file. And with that we should now have tailwind set up for our project. Tailwind allows for customization. We won't be doing much for this application but there is a few small things we're going to configure. Within the Tailwind configuration, the first thing we're going to do is create some custom colors for our application. Now where we do this is within the theme property here and then we have an additional property within this theme property called extend and this is where we want to define our custom colors. So for this we're going to create a colors property here and then we can define all the colors that we want for our application. So we're going to have two, whether primary and then whether secondary. Next, we are going to be using a custom font from Google called Roboto. Within our theme property, but outside of our extend property here, we want to create a new property and call this font family, and here's where we can define all the fonts that we want to use within our application. Now for a custom font from Google, we are going to be using the link tag. So what we'll do is we'll copy this link tag here from the Google Fonts site. And then within our application here inside of the index.html file within the head tag here, we just want to copy and paste this in. Next, we're going to add some custom configuration to the container class. Now by default, when we use a container class, there isn't any default margin that's added or padding that usually comes along when using a container. So using the configuration here, we can add that to our container class by default. So that way we don't have to add that every time we are using the container. To do this, we just want to define a container property here and add our options. So what we're going to do is add padding to the left and right of 2REM, and then we're going to add center to true, which is going to act as a margin auto. The last thing we're going to configure is going to be the breakpoints. By default, Tailwind comes with breakpoints that are inspired by common device resolutions. For this application, we don't need to use all those breakpoints, and I only want to use a few of them. So what we're going to do is override those, and how we do that is by defining a screen property here and setting the breakpoints that we want to use. So for this application, we're going to be using a small breakpoint, which is going to be 640 pixels, and then we're also going to be using a medium breakpoint, which is going to be 768 pixels.